स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम Gospel of Sri Ram Krishna. Advice to the Brahmos. The chapter is going on. There was a song. Alas, the last stanza of that song. Alas, I wander about, absorbed in unmeaning deeds. Even for thy holy name, I have no taste, O Mother. I doubt that I shall ever be cured of this malady. Beginning with inability to do the sadhana because of the old samskaras, the jiva is telling, what a delirious fever is this I suffer from, O Mother. Thy grace is my only cure. False pride is the fever that racks. From there, the song begins, ends with, I doubt that I shall ever be cured of this melody. The, we see in our Hindu tradition, from the ancient times, two important way of teaching mankind of the consequences of the actions, thoughts and feelings and of the path to transcend the nature and go are taught through stories and songs. How to love God, how to surrender, how to go in our own path to the divine. Each has his own nature. One is the internal nature, external nature. Internal nature, Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsarya, Raga, Dvesha, Ahankara, all these are within. Lust, greed and all that. Likes and dislikes. Ego, all these are within. Externally, we are subjected to the external nature. Our birth, growth, old age, death, nothing can be avoided. This we constantly see being we are under the, in the prison of, of nature and internally we are driven by our own nature. So how to go beyond, how to get eternal freedom from this nature, how to enter the life transcendental of everlasting peace, bliss and freedom. This has been brought to us from the most simplest moral disciplines, consequences, everything from the stories. So many stories give us the understanding how I should be, how should, should I live in this world. This we see clearly here, the saints, almost all saints we see, they have made such an impact on us through the bhajans. One of the important parts that balances all aspects of human existence with the spiritual life. We are living in a world of multifarious activities, so many things going on and our nature reacting to everything and how the teachings are brought to us uh, through music, singing, 
this singing is one thing that uh, one side it is tuned to the nature through raga one uh, another side same nature it is tuned with the rhythm and these tunes beautiful tunes make us slowly merge in the nature and be one with nature though it is momentary as long as we sing it balances all aspects of our life we have duties to perform family duties duties towards the society duties for our earnings hmm then duties towards the nation duties towards the humanity duty towards our own individual self for evolution all these aspects of life we have to balance and this gives an important basis of where all things are balanced because i am in tune with nature nature is pervading every aspect of life when i enter into deep sleep where nobody is there except myself their nature is there to bring me back to waking state the whole universe at all levels are pervaded by this nature mother nature and if you analyze our body all aspects of my existence bodily existence psychic existence the senses all that all layers belongs to nature mind belongs to nature everything even physical body we have to live one day and go all the three bodies we, we nature makes me independent of the three na- three bodies and make me merge in the universal consciousness every day in sleep so the whole thing is every bit of existence in nature is pervaded by nature in this universe every bit of its existence is pervaded by nature at all levels and i am in tune with that nature in singing a bhajan here through that when the soul is in tune with nature and the knowledge and understanding is given it goes to the deeper layers of our antar pragna inner awareness once the thing enter into in our inner awareness antar pragna bahir pragna antar pragna from within it slowly press goes on like a heater put within goes on releasing the waves of heat one after the other in the same way we slowly see that from within the understanding is dawning lay layer by layer little by little clearly we see and understand that something intuitively i am understanding what i should do how i should go here the attitude of surrender is brought into picture how will i without your help how can all defects all imperfections are within me that i don't find any way open to my life to enter into my relationship with god or to be released from this so only way is to surrender to the divine mother mother who is pervading the whole universe as nature who stands independent of the entire universe for the sake of jeevas so that mother the soul is surrendering and the how to surrender through all these things then the master said the one of the lines of the poem he is taking up even for thy name i have no taste this in the song uh, shri ram krishna is quoting that line even for thy name i have no taste hmm a typhoid patient has very little chance of recovery if he loses all taste for food any any diseases especially 
these modern diseases like cancer and all, we see when the patient, the first thing patient starts feeling is dislike for food. Any treatment, cancer treatment, whatever it be, uh, whether it is chemo or other things, radiations, first thing is distaste, vomiting sensations and all, distaste for food. And a stage comes and he can no more tolerate the food that is put in the mouth. Intolerance towards the food, there is no more chance of the soul as if it has uh, retreated from the body. It has already decided to leave the body and go away, like that situation. So that, that, he, that Sri Ramakrishna is giving that example, how it will be. Typhoid patient has very little chance of recovery if he loses all taste for food. But his life need not be despaired of if he enjoys food even a little, little food also, he has some small thing that I can take this, this much. That is the way one should cultivate taste for God's need. Most of the people have this complaint. I won't be able to do, I won't be able to Sit for japa, I won't be able to do. Mind is running here, there, this and that. Almost all sadhakas in the beginning feel this. Hmm. But, but if you can find some way that you are able to just limit, repeat name for 10 minutes or 5 minutes, even without concentration, just sit calmly, make your mind calm. 5 minutes can you give to God out of the 24 hours, just 5 minutes. Hmm. Forget everything. Hmm. Just take the name of God for 5 minutes then it is sufficient. Hmm. From there, uh, it is like something penetrating into our uh, mosquitoes and all you must see. Just they penetrate and start sucking. Uh, here, there is a high pressure from within. The soul wants to see, is intensely seeking freedom. It is struggling for release. We are not understanding. There is inner pressure. The divinity within wants somehow to emerge out and manifest itself, spread itself. The struggle is going on within. We are not able to understand. We are trying to see in the world whether I can get something here. It is searching for in the world. M many times we conceive God in our external awareness instead of taking, searching Him in our internal awareness. The feeling, uh, much deeper layer is the spiritual heart compared to the feeling heart. And physical heart you can leave, it is just a part of the body. Feeling heart stands beyond mind, beyond intellect, at the depth of your being. All your awarenesses of the world, family, this, that, behind it stands the feeling heart. Still deeper is the spiritual heart. After crossing the inner awareness, Bahir Pragna, after the Bahir Pragna, the, comes the Antar Pragna, this in the Antar Pragna, like a bird, sits, Thakur used to lie, allow that scene of bird hatching its egg. Uh, it is sitting, it is looking all around here and there, but all attention is on the egg where it is sitting. The same thing we have to, the 
I have to search God, not in the external. Though it begins with meditation, that is why in our Ramakrishna tradition or even in Bhakti tradition, you are asked to meditate on God within the heart and God is facing in the same direction as you are within you so that you will be able to project yourself out and travel from the outside to the inner world layer by layer. So the inward journey becomes possible when this is. Now the search must be within your heart, beyond the feeling heart, beyond the external awarenesses, deep within where I exists. I and God exist together in the heart. So I have to turn inward and dive within. So little when you start taking the name of God, uh, a small anything connected with spiritual life, spiritual world, divinity, God, anything connected with enters into the antar pradnya. All other knowledge, including you are going to school and studying, research, this, that, everything connected with the external world remains as the external awareness in the bahir pradnya. It can never enter into antar pradnya, the inner recesses of your existence. There won't be anything connected. Just without any interest, hmm, just you are taking the name of God, sitting for five minutes, it makes a penetration into the, through the feeling heart, it makes a penetration into the inner awareness, capital A, awareness, the inner awareness, antar pragna, it makes a way into antar pragna and gets deposited there, layer by layer, it expands. From within it has to come. It must, your attention must be drawn to the inner world, not the external world. So how this, just a little, the same thing Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. Little, svalpam apyasya dharmasya. What I am telling you, a small iota of it, if you practice, you will be saved from the great fear. Great fear is again and again falling into this world. To go beyond is the aim of human life. How can I go beyond? Going beyond. Breaking all bonds and going beyond. So here we see hmm, a little taste. That is why one should cultivate taste for God's name. Hmm. How do you cultivate? Hmm. Reading the whatever you constantly are associated with, you develop liking for that. Anything, be it food also, first you may not, you may be disliking it. After some time, a few times you start eating it, you start developing a taste for that. Hmm. Atmospheric conditions, climatic conditions, you may go to a new place where it is not at all suitable to you. Hmm. But you are forced to go and stay there for a job. Within a year or two, you get so much accustomed with that climatic condition that you find it originally where you are born and brought up, you find it difficult to come and stay again. So this uh, slowly getting, uh, get taste, read some books or something. Now suppose Krishna, Krishna Leela, you read a little uh, Thakur's life read a little, somewhere you get a link, just daily, one, ten, ten lines, 
a small paragraph of any spiritual matter, especially those belonging to the saints, their life and their words, the enlightened people, words of the enlightened people, not the modern spiritualists who read few books and ta start teaching, but those who are enlightened, those who have got the inner light. So their words, just somewhere your inner response to that call. So many things are there. Go on reading. One thing will catch you and you will catch one thing. That will be the, uh, because your nature is there. What exactly suits your nature alone it can catch and in that alone, that path alone you have to go. Suppose love of God may get, you may get interested. Since you may get interested in Jnana Patha of one reality, all this world as Maya, something somewhere. My, what are the, my experiences, lives after lives I have passed through, I have cultivated a nature of looking at things. And according to this nature, I will be searching my friends, my relatives, uh, everything is decided by my tendencies. So I have likes and dislikes. These likes and dislikes will determine how, how, how what path I am going to choose, what is going to affect my heart, what is going to catch me. Is So just read a few lines every day, maybe of Bhagavad Gita, maybe teaching of Sri Ramakrishna or anything, one place you see, oh, this is. I saw one sadhaka uh, here nearby. He was, whoever comes to his village, he will go there and whatever he starts, says, he will go on practicing till another person comes and takes him over. He ran here, there, here, there, doing sadhana, whatever is available, whatever path is there, like modern people taking up the cell phone and searching for the, in the Google, so many paths, uh, which has only words, but no spirit in it. So, try to follow that. Like that, hmm, this, this person, last at the fag end of his life, he happened to go to uh, Raman Marshi's place and he found total acceptance of that ideal. Uh, whole life I was searching where I can rest, where I can get my food. Then at that old age and the rest of the life, the short period of life, what he saw was the constant evolution towards the perfection. This is how we go by trial and error, but for every jiva there is a path to God of its own. We grow closer and closer, closer by selection and reach that. So, in Bhagavad Gita, it says, Svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. Even if you have a little taste for that, it is sufficient, you will be saved. Hmm. Here he says, uh, that is why you should cultivate tastes for God's name. Hmm. Most important thing that gives taste for God's name is the life of saints, highly encouraging and possibility that I too can realize God, that faith in oneself with all my imperfections, all my dirty life, I can still, still aspire for God realization. Uh, if you read the life of saints, from the lowest rung, they climb to the highest peak. What, what, what? How a small support they search and start climbing. 
Hmm. Then you see slowly that oh, uh, the uh, it is birthright, my birthright, birthright of every human to reach God. It is His birthright. Nobody can stop it. No, His own karmas or vasanas do not obstruct that right. Only thing I must know how to break through and pass. Then another thing is to pray to God with a sincere heart. Give me taste for your name. Give me liking for your name. May I be able to repeat your name and think of you, call upon you. So we cultivate the taste for God's name. Any name will do, Durga, Krishna or Shiva. Then if through the chanting of the name, one's attachment to God grows day by day and joy fills your soul, one has nothing to fear. By chanting the name of God, what happens? One, one's attachment to God grows. That's why when we joined the mutt as brahmacharis, our seniors used to tell us, with open eyes, sit before the deity, if you want, in your own room, keep a picture of Sri Ramakrishna. Sit in front of it with open eyes and pray. You can pray for anything, even for good food or anything, but pray. Pray for eight hours a day, totally indifferent, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you get, you get with open eyes. What happens is you are coming in relationship with God. What you ask for is different. It goes off. But your relationship with God becomes firm. Slowly you are talking to God. Your dependence little by little is enhancing. Your relationship with God is enhancing. You are feeling His living presence when you pray. Slowly your attachment for God also grows because it is your innermost divinity is projecting. If a, a dog has affinity for dog, uh, elephant has affinity for elephant, of their own, the birds of the same feather, they have attachment for each other. Like that, as bodily existence, I am human and I have gregarious tendency to live in groups with people and my own family. And when we come to the God, my real self, my Atman existence, my inner self is there, my inner divinity is there, which is constantly seeking the absolute, this, to go back to the source from whence it came. So when you start interacting, you will identify. When Hanuman comes to Rama, they look like strangers talking to each other. Give me your identity, give me your identity. Hmm. Then you see how the attachment grows. Oh Lord, you are here. My soul was searching for you. A total, just a moment's contact. Krishna and Arjuna coming in contact. Ram Krishna and Vivekananda coming in contact. The same thing happens at individual level when the stores, when it comes in contact with the divine and recognizes the divine, it is, is the relationship is entering into eternity. All other relationships merge, you break and end and go away. I mean, my dearest, I might have given birth to a child. But it may not serve, my relationship doesn't survive, enter into eternity. It goes with the fall of the body. But here we see it, uh, my relationship with God enters into eternity. 
शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत् श्री राम कृष्णार्पणमस्तु